So in this YouTube channel, we like to focus on objective test findings for solar power equipment and education, but we seem to always run into controversial material because we like to do battery breakdowns. And tonight I got a little bit bored and I wanted a different project. I've been doing like the same BMS testing all week. So I took apart the Lion Energy battery. And I must say that it's a very impressive build quality. Every connection and the thickness of wires is really nice. Like they did make a really nice battery. And the BMS also has two temperature sensors, one for the cells that's glued directly to it, and one that goes out to the heat sink so that if you have an over temperature situation on the BMS, it will disconnect everything. And now for the fun. When I took this apart, I looked at the back and there's a sticker that says 120 amps. This battery is rated for 150 amps. Why is there a sticker saying that? I do not understand why. So to make this a lot of fun, we're gonna rebuild this battery and we're gonna add a 150 amp load and see if it can actually handle it. I mean, come on you guys, that's ridiculous. And honestly, I laughed pretty hard when I saw this sticker. This might be referring to the charging speed. On the data sheet, it says actually 100 amps for charging. So maybe that's referring to that, but I'm not sure we need to test it out ourselves. I also have a second battery and it's in the freezer right now and I'm going to wait till it's nice and cold and we're going to try to charge that one to make sure that the low temperature disconnect actually works. So tonight's going to be a fun night. By the way, it's New Year's Eve, but I do not celebrate most holidays because I just don't really care. So we're just going to be building batteries all night. So first we're going to build this battery outside of its case. I just realized when putting these terminal connectors on, these are only rated for 50 amps and you have two. So what's 50 plus 50? 100. Is that 150? No, so that's not a good sign. No way, it's working! <laughs> you guys, look at this. So if we press the button, we have a state of charge indicator, and this battery is full, but we're gonna charge it up all the way so that this test is fair. To make this a lot of fun, let's stick the temperature sensor in freezing cold water to test the low temp disconnect. And this is salt water. Guys, frozen salt water, we're at negative nine degrees Celsius. Oh, whoops. No way. Oh my God, it just disconnected. How cool is that, you guys? The low temp disconnect actually works. That's great. All right, now let's heat up the temperature sensor. And we got 10 amps. How cool is that? Let's stick it back in the water. Look at that, it just disconnected. Oh, this is so much fun. All right, let's heat up the sensor one more time. And it's charging. That is really cool. And frozen salt water is the best way of testing it. Thanks to the viewer who commented that on one of my previous videos. And now we're doing 100 amps into this battery because I have a speed charger connected. So let's see what happens. That really is not a safe charge rate for these cells. I know on the data sheet, it does not recommend doing that. It's like a 0.5C usually. I also noticed that it has a communication port. So we have a P minus RX, TX, and VDD. And I do know that the BMS for warranty issues has a cycle counter. And this is probably where they flash the firmware. I wish we could actually access this information through like a Bluetooth dongle. That would be really cool. Another thing to note is this is made by Superpower. We also have a model number, so SPBT04014A04. So maybe you guys can find this BMS because that would be awesome. I mean, why can't we just buy these by themselves? It has low temp cutoff and we're about to test the discharge rate, but yeah, that would be cool if we could just buy these direct and then sell them on a website or something, that'd be sweet. Now the power supply has dropped to zero and we're at 13.8. Earlier I saw it hit 14.6, but I think it's just topping it up. It's in absorption. So the voltage is going up and down. Lithium iron phosphate likes to settle um, after you're done charging it. So it will peak on and off a little bit. So we could charge it like a couple more percent, but this battery is fully charged. And now the next part is doing the load test. We're gonna pull 150 amps and see how long it can power that load for. See, I love doing videos like this cause it's super fun and we get to answer a question. There's an unknown answer. I love that. And to ensure that this test is fair, we're gonna use the original wires that this battery came with. I am not going to directly connect it to the battery. We are using the wires that it came with. That's very important. 
Because we're load testing it, the copper needs to touch the copper, so this is a very solid connection. So now we have our meter connected, a Hall effect sensor, and we have the main positive and the main negative. And everything is spec accordingly for this load test. Also, this battery is at a slight advantage because the BMS heatsink is not in a plastic case that insulates. It actually has a lot more airflow or convective flow when this thing starts heating up. So yeah, let's do this test and see what happens. And this is pulling 123 amps at 12.4 volts. But this BMS is rated for that, so we need to add a little bit more power to this. So this was hard to do, but we have a 23 to 25 amp load, and now we're gonna run the heat gun. Oh, this is probably the limit of this meter. I think 125 amps is the limit. Oh, what a bummer. And this heat gun actually pulls 135 amps with the inverter losses. So we actually exceeded 150 amps and it kept working. So let's do that test again. So this is a 160 amp test. Let's see how long it can power it for. So first we have 24 amps and we're gonna add 135. We're gonna put it on a stopwatch to see when it cuts off. Also, my calculations do not include the wire loss, and this is under gauge for this load, and these wires are getting really hot. So it's running really well right now. This is incredible. Okay, now it's starting to get warm, but it's only 28 degrees Celsius. That's fine. These wires are super hot, you guys. This is not rated for this load at all. This is actually more of a wire test. My goodness, these are four gauge welding cables, pure copper, but they are holding up. We're at 12.56 volts. And with the voltage drop, we're only at 11.3 volts at the inverter. If the inverter cuts out before this thing does because we have improper gauge wire, that would be so funny. I actually want to test this insulation though. I haven't gotten it this hot before. Now the BMS is at 40 degrees Celsius. It's doing really good though. The backside isn't warm at all. Guys, we need to find this BMS. This thing is really good. These wires at 57 degrees Celsius now. So this is 2000 watts with a single battery. And the cells are staying pretty cool to the touch. And I just realized there's spacers and there's enough room for air to flow between the cells. Guys, these bus bars are still not warm, so these are solid. They did a great job with these. Now we're at 82 degrees Celsius on these wires, but we're still running. Ooh, ouch. God, that is super hot. All right, 20 minutes, let's turn it off. So we pulled 160 amps or more because that's not including the wire loss, and these everything was hot here for 20 minutes. So that's at least 682 watt hours for a 1200 watt hour battery. So we went from 100% down to 50% at more than what it's rated for, 10 amps more, or even more than that because of the wire loss. And we had huge voltage drop and it still ran the load. That's incredible. I honestly thought that it was not gonna perform well at all and I was gonna have to email them, but this is a pleasant surprise. The low temperature cutoff works. We pulled more than what it's rated for and it ran perfectly. And I swear these wires were about to melt before this thing was gonna melt. So you guys did a good job. Good job, Lion Energy. Now what I wanna know is if this is a proprietary BMS only for Lion Energy, because we need to get our hands on this. This thing is incredible. But whoever designed this, you guys did a great job. This is totally pulling the load and I am thoroughly impressed. I love this. And what's really cool is Lion Energy is actually coming out with a 1300 watt hour model. So I think they're using 100 amp hour cells, but I'm gonna have that soon here to test. And that's gonna be a sponsored video because they're sending it out. This one's technically kind of sponsored because they sent this out like six months ago. But yeah, I'm not on contract for any of these companies. They just send these batteries out so that I can test them. And usually we find problems, but tonight we did not find any problems. Everything worked as advertised. So that's really cool. So good job everybody at Lion Energy. And I want this BMS, I need this. I need this in my life. This thing is so cool, man. It even has a shunt for state of charge indicator. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and happy new years. Right now I think it's the new year, I have no idea. Yeah, in 50 minutes it will be the new year. So I need to edit this video and try to post it before <laughs> the countdown or whatever. And one final bonus test, I forgot that this was in the freezer, so let's test the temperature and we're at negative two, negative five degrees Celsius. I got the negative, I got the positive. 
And check it out, the power supply turned off. The low temperature cutoff works on this bot battery as well. So yeah, this battery has a good BMS that functions as well. That's awesome. Okay, now this video is done. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.